Hello ladies and gentlemen, Jimmy Ding here for the first time ever not bringing you another Conan Exiles video. For my Conan Exiles viewers out there, don't worry, I am sure as heck not stopping that content, but if you're new to the channel, please do check out some of my Conan build videos if you like to see some creative base designs and epic castles. But to the task at hand, this game here is Valheim, and it's taking the survival crafting genre by storm and for good reason. It's only early access right now, but its combination of terraforming, base building, dungeon delving and exploration of a sort of Norse purgatory has a lot of people talking about and playing it, me included. I cannot wait to progress into this game and start throwing down some full size castles but for now, for all you newer players joining us out there on Valheim, I thought I'd make a little guide to setting yourself up with a really solid start. A lot of these concepts won't be new to you if you're experienced in survival crafting games, but there's a couple points I'll make that are unique to this game which I haven't seen other people cover so far. If you like it, please give that like button a little click and I'd massively appreciate you subscribing to me too. So let's get to it. Every time you start in one of the procedurally generated maps on Valheim, you'll be flown in on this giant bird who then shrinks down and pops up to give you advice now and then. Pay attention to what he says as he is actually pretty useful to be fair. As soon as you can, you want to start gathering up the branches and punching any of the little trees to get as much wood as possible. And this brings us to the first tip for newbies, trust in the club. The club is a decent weapon for all the enemies in the starting regions. I prefer it over the spear and the knife which a lot of other people will recommend. Uh, it's especially good for skeletons who take more damage from blunt weapons. Keep on watching and you'll find out why having the upper hand fighting skeletons is so important later on in the video. The club is the first thing I make because things want to murder you straight away in Valheim which brings me to tip number two in regards to your early game healing, eat anything and everything. Other games might punish you with things that can make you sick, but in Valheim, any berries, mushrooms or meat you can find, just ram it down your throat, as this will fill one of the three food slots on the bottom left corner, which in turn increases your puny little health and stamina bar. You can only stack one type of food once, so I usually go for two types of meat and either a berry or mushroom when I first join a map, as these are all found in the starting area and give you a good little boost. Holster that club or pickaxe, or sword, or hoe if that's what you're into. One thing this game is quite punishing on is stamina usage, so combine that with a speed penalty for having literally anything in your hand and you can be caught off guard quite easily. It may be tempting to leg it about with your weapon drawn and ready but I strongly recommend getting into the habit of pressing the default R key to sheathe whatever is in your hands. If, like me, you were drawn to this game to build cool stuff on it, it's tempting and possible to set up a little home base as soon as you start a new game, but it is so worth being a little more patient and exploring a bit before settling down. One of the main things to keep an eye out for are these abandoned, ruined Viking style houses. You'll also find the occasional wooden lookout tower like the one on screen now. They're also worth a butcher's. Three of the main reasons these are always worth dropping what you're doing and investigating are as follows. First and most obvious one, the loot. As you saw then, you get useful early game resources like feathers, flint, sometimes arrows, as well as coins that you can use on a trader that spawns on the map, a subject for another video one day. Second, there are sometimes beehives inside. Make sure to shoot these down, don't melee them as you'll get stung and poisoned, but this gives a high chance to drop a queen that you can use to build your own hives. Honey is a good early game food and used in later game health potions too. Just don't get stung like I just did, else you'll end up like poor Bear Grylls did here. Thirdly, and most commonly overlooked, is that with an initial investment of 10 wood for a crafting bench, that you can break down and get 100% of that back anyway, you can also break down the huts for wood too. As this clip shows, I got 31 wood in about 2 seconds from doing this, which would usually involve chopping down at least 2 trees. As they say, time is money. As a bonus tip, I also like to set up my start out base inside one of these huts as it saves me some time. For this video, I set up camp in this pretty little lakeside ruined village. Just build yourself a hammer as so with some wooden stone, then whack yourself down a crafting bench to allow you to build and edit within the radius and you are laughing. One of the first things you'll want to build from this brings us to tip number 5, trust in the bow. 
You'll need to slaughter some piggies for leather scraps and collect some wood, but the crude bow gives you a brilliant ranged advantage. Many say the drop off on it makes it a bit crap, but another Jimmading top tip is for anything over 20 feet away, aim for their health bar and you can't go wrong. This weapon also allows you to easily beat the first boss too, which I'll get to in just a moment. For my next tip, no matter whether you build from scratch or commandeer a broken down hut, make sure you live by the water. Water is the only place where you can find flint that is used for better arrows. Same again goes for tin deposits that you'll need a little bit later in the game. Aside from those things, once you're a big strong fully grown viking you'll want to go pillaging on another island, so being near that water for your raft or boat is also very handy. If you are building from scratch by the way, you'll want to make life easier by building on flat ground and you can bend the ground to your will with some hoeing. Make one of these bad boys in the crafting bench and you can flatten earth, raise it by spending stone or remove grass to make a nice pretty path. A good tip for the builders out there, Valheim uses a helpful colour code scheme to show stability and building health which makes building very quick. Demonstrating this with a crash course, blue is 100% stable, green is one off stable, and as it starts getting more red around the fourth tile out, anything you place will crumble. <coughs> a feature that is an example of this game's attention to detail is how fire smoke billows out and around solid objects like in this nighttime shot. It also means that if you don't build a chimney or hole for your smoke to escape through indoors, your character literally chokes to death. Don't fall victim to this easy to avoid death. Now that you've got a base down and started getting some of the low level armour and weapons, you'll want to train. Obviously, you can do this on the mobs that spawn about, and to be honest, they aren't that much of a threat in small numbers. But to be really safe from harm, know that you can hack, slash, and fill full of arrows any of the rocks about the map, and it still gives you XP. This is a good way to get your combat levels up to a respectable level very early on. With a few levels under your belt you'll want to progress on in the tech tree and to do that you'll need to take on the first boss. Go back to the starting rune circle to begin this process, I've already done that now in the save you're seeing which is why that gnarly looking deer skull is on the stone there. I'll show you what to do though. At the circle, activate this little square to make the summoning area appear on your map. Once you've got two deer trophies obtained by killing random deers, leg it on over to the summoning area. Now equip the deer trophies in your hotbar and walk up to this altar table thing in the middle of it and just use the trophies on it. This will spawn the boss in. Follow where all these sparkly blobs converge to as that is where the boss will spawn in. Once it has spawned in, use your newly mastered crude bow and simply run around the nearby trees and even the summoning stones like I'm doing here which will just confuse the deer boss to no end. He can range attack you with a lightning bolt move, but it has a really slow start up where he just rears up on his hind legs so it's easy to spot. Just whittle him down with the bow until he's dead and voila, you've beaten the first boss. From his cold dead body you'll get his trophy and a material called hard antler. Both of these are important so pick them up run back and place the trophy on the stone rune circle to complete that mission and get an ability. When you activate this it has a 20 minute cooldown but you use 50% less stamina while running and or jumping for 5 minutes so it's pretty damn strong. Back at your base use the hard antler to make your first pickaxe. Along with being able to smash rocks for a faster stone gathering rate and letting you dig down on normal earth which the hoe doesn't allow you you can now mine copper, which looks like these giant mossy stones here, as well as these little tin deposits found by the water edge. Combine these in smelters to create bronze bars, which make you the next tier of weapons, armour and tools. Whilst you pat yourself on the back for beating the boss and earning the privilege of slowly smashing up metal nodes, you might still be afraid of this big blue bad boy. but. 
Trolls are also really good for quickly mining a resource, so unless one's right on top of your base, it's actually a really good idea to keep one around if you see it. Its ground pound attack makes quick work of copper deposits which take ages to mine, and they can take out a handful of trees in two swings, just make sure you don't get clobbered too. I'm here to tell you, trolls are good, trolls are your friends, right until they serve their purpose, and then you can kill them and skin them. Doing so allows you to craft troll armour, which is really good early armour and gives a 25% sneak bonus per item of troll armour worn. Once you've got a nice pile of copper and tin ore, you'll want to smelt it. To make a smelter, you need coal, so realistically you need a coal kiln to fuel said smelter. This means you'll need certling cores, five apiece for a smelter and a kiln to be precise. They look like this, little black and red Rubik's cubes which you'll find in one of Valheim's many burial ground dungeons. These dungeons tend to look like this cave here, or this funky looking Stonehenge thing, either of which you can enter into. Inside it's really dark so a torch is quite handy. I've actually cleared this example but you'll have to traverse the mini maze of corridors filled with skeletons which if you've been practicing your skull bashing with the club will be easy enough until eventually you'll find a circling core or a few of them at once. You can only find these dungeons in the more dangerous black forest area of the map. They're not impossible to find but there aren't loads jumping out at you either. Therefore, if you've only got, say, five circling cores, make the most of the 100% recycle rate. Build your coal kiln, create a metric crap ton of coal, dismantle the kiln, and then make a smelter. Until you find more dungeons and cores, this method works fine and actually saves space in your base. Another dungeon I've come across is a troll cave. This is a bit rarer than your burial ground ones, but yields a huge amount of gold coins, gems and other valuables if you can beat the troll that lives inside it. Luckily, I'm about to show you a rather troll cave breaking exploit that may or may not get patched as time goes on. As the game is right now, after a couple weeks after launch, you can basically just ping the troll in the head with your bow, jump back outside before he can hit you, then return back inside, rinse and repeat. The troll's health doesn't regen upon X in the cave and you can just whittle it down until he eventually dies like so. Couldn't happen too soon as well, as my bow was about two shots away from breaking then. You get three times the amount of troll skin from these trolls too. A higher chance to get the troll trophy, this is based on the fact that I've found two of these caves and got the trophy both times. And as mentioned, the valuables loot is pretty damn good too. So, there you have it guys and gals, my tips and guide to getting you up to bronze smelting in no time at all whilst having a lot of fun along the way. I'd love to hear what tips and tricks you have up your sleeves on Valheim, so please comment down below. If you enjoyed the video then like I said, please hit that like button and give me a little subaru for the trouble. I'm really looking forward to producing more Valheim content alongside my Conan XR's videos, so here's hoping the developers continue to do a great job. This has been Jimmy Ding, happy playing guys.